Anurada, welcome. You've had an extraordinary career in the Indian space program, straddling some 35 years. What inspired you in the first place to follow a career that's been immersed in engineering, creativity and innovation? I think it started when I was doing my pre-engineering and engineering course during that time. Of course, from the beginning, I was always interested in maths and science and I used to do well. Um, during engineering, that was the time when Indian Space Program had uh, you know, started launching some of the rockets and we had our share of failures too. But it was so exciting that India was into that and that was one place I really wanted to join in. Your work has contributed enormously into getting the communications in space absolutely right. Tell me, what have been some of the biggest considerations? Most of us, uh, what we have been doing is with the limited resources and the kind of constraints, whatever we have, within that, what is the best we can bring in? In fact, India is one place, if you just see the uh, background elsewhere too, that we started thinking about the applications and then brought the space programs. And they are all absolutely application-oriented programs. The challenge has been that how do we do it quickly? How to augment our capacities quickly and then make it totally indigenous and bring it to the nation? Obviously, speed is incredibly important, but uh, tell me, is design also important? And can you inject a, a sense of the aesthetic into something that by its nature has to be functional? Of course, design is first and foremost. In fact, space programs are one where any new program takes a lot of time on designing. And if you're repeating the programs, then you have to concentrate on its validations, reliability, and repeat the designs and then do it. And in fact, on space, we try our best that the heritage, how to bring it in into each and every design is most important, you know. And uh, at the same time, we have to augment certain new designs. That is a big conflict uh, for a system engineer, wherein you have to add on the new features also, and you have to take in the heritages also. That's the juggling that goes on. India has, of course, made rapid advances in its space program. Narendra Modi, the Indian Prime Minister, has announced that uh, the first Indian manned space flight will take off in 2022. How exciting is that and how has that affected your preparations? That's a huge step for us indeed. And we are all excited about the program. And uh, human space program is not something that can happen in a couple of years. We have been working on various factors over the last one and a half decades. In fact, we even had our uh, uh, SRE mission, that is a, uh, the mission in which the satellite came back and we could recover it. And that is one of the aspects that involved the re-entry process. The re-entry process is highly complicated with respect to the atmospheric temperature, etc. And the material, the cladding we had to provide, you know, that gave us a lot of confidence and boost, including a lot of mechanisms like how the chutes have to open up and uh, how you recover, etc. And apart from that, we also had another experiment where uh, the crew module, we put it as a dummy crew module and then we had a lot of experiments put on that for measurements, etc. That was successful. Before our uh, Mark III uh, vehicle went, this we put as a dummy payload on that and we tried to get. A lot of experiments are going on, including the space suit. These were going on as a R&D, research and development. And the government of India has now put a big uh, responsibility to integrate all these things and make it as a human space program. Uh, it's very exciting and very challenging. It's a different ball game altogether. Well, of course, humankind seems to have had an eternal fascination with space. We've had 50 years since the moon landings for the first time. What do you think is going to drive that fascination to continue into the future? Even 50 years is not enough to understand space. 
is so much not understood in the space, so much not understood about how everything originated. So that always drives, that is the root cause for all the space programs and the sciences which started, the beautiful telescopes what we put in to understand more and more about our galaxy and beyond, etc. And that I suppose is a primary uh, source for the, uh, you know, the drive. And secondly, we also have to look at, are there any other species out? That's something extraordinarily important and we have to keep learning about it, life, life outside Earth. And thirdly, probably, you know, can we go and stay? Can we habitat? These are all, you know, the major things which thrust you towards the space, apart from the applications which it has brought. Maybe the science started with those curiosity, but enormous applications have emerged, which have come out. Do you think that uh, artificial intelligence is going to help us understand space that much more? And can it go further in terms of accelerating the understanding and the kind of missions that can be launched? Definitely. Artificial intelligence is like a tool which you have to use where the human body itself will not be able to perform and try to gather information, etc. So definitely it is going to have a big role to play. There's no GPS in outer space, but uh, do you see a role for GPS in helping us navigate the bigger, wider expanses of the universe? Yeah, GPS is, is one such system. And uh, navigation is much, much older than the GPS itself. People have been navigating with various means. And far out beyond all these things, for example, India also has, we have our own navigation system. I mean, just by the way, um, it's the stars which are there out, which can give us a lot of coordinates and then help us in the navigation. Do you think that space programs are going to be confined to those countries that can devote the time, people and money into many years of research and development? Or are we going to see the benefits of international collaboration? I mean, we've got many countries queuing up to send their people into space and to work with those countries that have existing space programs. Actually, when you say space program, it's not just about sending somebody into space. That's one part of it. The biggest part of space program is bringing the applications down for day-to-day -day life. In that sense, it is very important for every nation to have that. It's not necessary for every country to have an established infrastructure for doing these things, which costs a lot of money, definitely. And International cooperations are a must in this field because it is something, it's a venture which, you know, has to bring for the entire humanity, not for specific countries. From that point of view, it's really important that we do cooperate and uh, that is how it is going to, yeah, it's not a competition out there, it's a survival. I understand that uh, you actually wanted to be an astronaut yourself. Do you still have that desire? Oh, that, <laughs> that would be the imagination of anyone, isn't it? Way long back, I had enrolled my name also when Russia offered that there could be one. Of course, I got eliminated in the first round itself. <laughs> well, of course, space has been a big topic that's captured the imagination of many film producers around the world. Do you think the depiction of space is accurate? Oh, uh, well, it's a story, not very accurate. Like, for example, in one of the movies, Sandra Bullock goes from one space station to other space station, etc. No. <laughs> Anurada, thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you so much. It was lovely. Thank you.